The end of April and the beginning of May was a busy construction period at the home orphanage. Amber Corey, Home Orphanage Director, gives us a quick update. Looks like we're moving right along with the construction. What can you tell us about it, Amber? Yeah, we've seen a lot of progress this month. We're really excited. We had three teams here. Two of them are here at the same time, but we're seeing progress every day. I know right now the team out at the property, the, the locals that are working are finishing the flooring and the multi-purpose building. We've got windows and doors being installed. Things are progressing very rapidly. Every time I go out there, it looks different. A crew of 15 from the Faith Tabernacle Church in Manchester, Connecticut, including Pastor Kent Elliott and construction team leader Jim Wilshire, arrived on April the 22nd. Pastor Elliott tells us about his team's activities. What were some of the things that your team accomplished on this trip? Uh, we worked on in two homes. One of the homes, we uh, built the cabinets in the kitchen and a few other uh, vanities and storage um, area. Mm-hmm. And then the other house, which is actually the Florida house, uh-huh. we made door frames and hung doors. Okay. Now, I understand that your church has been involved in foreign missions for quite a while now. Yeah, it's actually our fourth trip taking men down over uh, the past uh, probably 12, 15 years, um, my fifth trip down there. Tell me, what, what's the effect that you see on those in your congregation that, that get involved in missions work? That exposure to outside of your local ministry is huge. You know, it brings back a, a greater uh, burden and passion um, outside of your local calling. Does your personal involvement in missions give you a greater insight and maybe a, a better ability to communicate that calling that we all have? Absolutely. There's so much, only so much that you can say or that you've heard or seen pictures. But when you get on the actual soil of that mission field, that not only personally does it bring back that you can minister and talk about that experience, but it runs over to your congregation that there's something bigger than right here in our own city. The California crew from Spirit and Truth Worship Center, pastored by Thomas Koppel in Orange, California, arrived on April the 26th. Team leader Dennis Barnes and his crew worked on two of the three homes sponsored by the California group. On this trip here, we worked on the two houses that we are building, the uh, Nathan House and the uh, Star House. And uh, we just went down to finish up what we started from last year. We put in about two ceilings in the houses, the wood ceilings. We got one completed, one about 90% completed. Uh, electrical, we did the bathroom tile in the, in the showers. And uh, you know, we painted both houses and then put the eave trim on the soffit so the eaves we completed both of those houses. Now, you mentioned earlier that this trip has been a blessing for the men that you work with on this project. Can you describe that? When they got on, you know, on board and went down there and started working with people, that, the locals that live there, and then actually being there on the mission station, you know, I mean, it, it changed their lives. Every one of them testified of how it just you know, opened up their eyes. The Florida crew arrived on April the 27th, led by Pastor Larry Sims of Soulsport United Pentecostal Church in Tallahassee. Along with members of churches in Palm Bay, Gainesville, Tallahassee, East Orlando, and Apopka, they installed a roof on the multi-purpose building and painted the Florida house. Sister Barbara Hutching of Apopka shares her thoughts. When we were painting, Marcy said you need to pray while you're painting because the kids that are going to be housed here will need that prayer. So I thought, you know, this is not about the paint we're putting on the walls or things that we're doing. It was about the kids, the impact that it was going to have on their lives. It was ultimately our goal to do this for the children. And finally, we finish with a discussion with Amber Corey about the issues she's addressing in preparation for the opening of the home orphanage. I know you have a very busy schedule ahead of you, but what are some things that have to be checked off your list before the children start to arrive? Okay, so before we can accept any children, we've got to finish getting our policy manual together. 
and then all of that will have to be approved by the government here, and we'll have to pass a an inspection of our facilities. And then we'll start getting all of our staff lined up. The first week of October, we have a team here installing the nurses station, and that should be our last thing that we need before inspection. Do you have a time frame for the opening? There are many variables that have to fall into place before we can go for our inspection. So it's hard to give a for sure time frame, but we're aiming for this fall. Now, will there be structured opportunities for financial support, like sponsorships? Just as soon as we have our first child, we'll, we'll be ready to launch our child sponsorship program. So we will definitely be offering child sponsorship. You can also sponsor an employee if you wanted to. Um, and then there's also, we've had people ask us about, well, can I sponsor food or electricity? And all of those things can be sponsored. We can, you can sponsor anything you want to sponsor. <laughs> yes, I'm sure there won't be lack of opportunity there. But what do you see as the largest challenge ahead of you before opening? The big concern right now is raising money for the general fund so we'll have operating expenses covered. But we're, we're just praying that God brings it all together. He's got a plan bigger than we could even imagine. So we know he's got the people in mind. He can give us favor with the government. And he's just had his hand in this all along so we know that he's got a plan for getting us up and rolling.